Hello everyone and welcome to my 2022 gaming and streaming setup tour. If you're new here, hello, my name is Robert, but I go online as Lil Scarface 609 and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I uploaded a setup video back in June of 2020 and ever since that video was released, I've significantly upgraded my setup in more ways than one. I also recently moved out of the place I was originally in. I lived in New Jersey and just recently moved out to Pennsylvania. I'm still currently in the process of getting a new place, so the setup you're seeing here is a temporary setup. I did try to do the best I can with what was provided to me, and I have to say I am proud of what it's become. But enough about me, let's get straight into the video. But before we start though, if you enjoy this video at any point, please make sure to like the video. And if you enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe to see more stuff like this in future videos. All right, so where do we start in a setup tour? I guess I'm just gonna go from left to right, starting with the bookshelf area. This is an Ikea Billy shelf. It has a pair of Govi RGBIC LED strips in the back of it to give it this nice looking effect in the back. Most of the lights that you're gonna see in this video is gonna be powered by Govi, by the way. On the top, we have a picture of me and my girlfriend, some boxes from my Agata products. I'm kind of a box hoarder, I apologize. I love to keep boxes for some reason, don't judge me. First shelf, we have an assortment of Funko Pops. I collect a lot of these, and to be honest, this is just a small fraction of my full collection. My other ones are in a big box for when I move into my new place. I can properly display them. These are just some of the recent ones I got. Next shelf is the box for my PS5, and on the right of that, we have some Xbox Series X controllers that I have yet to open, such as the Xbox 20th Anniversary Edition and the Halo Infinite Elite Series 2. Third shelf includes a limited edition Spider-Man PS4 Pro. And next to that are some DualSense controllers that I have for the PS5 on the official PS5 dual charging station. The fourth shelf is the box for my Xbox Series X. And next to that are some Series X controllers. And they're being charged with a Power A dual charging dock. And for the final shelf, we have an unopened limited edition Halo Infinite Xbox Series X. I got that as a collector's item. And next to that is a hockey puck signed by the goaltender of the Philadelphia Flyers, Carter Hart, in a display case. Hanging on the right of the shelf is my Oculus Quest 2 and the controllers. They're both being held up by some command hooks. They work fine. In the corner here, I have a Casio CTX 700 piano for whenever I practice piano. By the way, ignore the messy area here. I tried to hide the cables to the setup as best as I could, but the way this room is set up, there's literally only two outlets and they're located on opposite sides of the room. So I had to improvise. So that's pretty much this side of the room. Next up is the seeing area, but first on the roof we have a pair of 32 foot Govi RGBIC LED light strips so it wraps around the entire room. The rug is just some random rug I got from Marshalls, there's nothing really special about it. This room is pretty much a basement so the floor is basically cement so I wanted to get something that my chair could move around smoothly on. Speaking of chairs, I'm currently using the Secret Labs Omega Cookies and Cream 2020 edition. I was going to get the Titan version instead but those are made for people a little bit taller than me. I'm only 5'4 so this works wonderfully for me. Plus it's a little bit out of my price range, I'm pretty sure they're like 100 bucks more. Anyways, the soft weave fabric feels nice and my back no longer hurts during long gaming sessions. Sessions. I used to have a home all gaming chair that I got from Amazon for around $100 that, I was, that was included in my last setup video, but to be honest, it wasn't that great. Cheap gaming chairs are never really that great, to be honest. The leather easily peeled, it squeaked with every type of movement, and it just overall wasn't that comfortable compared to this one. If you're starting a setup for the first time, the one piece of advice that I can give is to invest in comfort. Your back will thank you later. If you're going to be sitting at your desk for long periods of time, you need that comfort. The last thing in this section would be the Elgato green screen. I use this on occasion when I make YouTube videos, but for the most part, I enjoy a natural background. It's super easy to set up and to put away when you're done with it. And that is pretty much my seating area. Next up is the main desk area. The cool design panels on the wall are called Art 3D panels. You can get them from Amazon. Uh, a lot of people see these and think they're soundproof acoustic panels, but they're not. They're literally just for decoration. They come in a box of 12, but I only put eight of them up. When I get my new place, I'll do the entire wall. The triangle lights on the wall are called Nano Leafs. I actually use these as my key lights for whenever I make videos and streaming on Twitch. All I gotta do is change the color to whatever I want with the mobile app or with the Elgato Stream Deck. 
The Stream Deck is a major part of my streaming setup due to the fact that I have a range of accessible hotkeys that I can do everything I needed to, such as sending out a tweet when I go live, clipping something from my stream, or changing my nano leaf colors like I said. The desk is the IKEA Linmon and Alex Drawer combo. This is the 78 inch version of the Linmon. Unfortunately, IKEA actually discontinued the specific model of the tabletop and replaced it with a similar one called the Lag Captain, I believe it's called. I'm almost positive it's literally the exact same thing, just a different name. On the left here, we got the PS5 and the Xbox Series X sitting right next to each other. I have some LED lamps for each platform sitting on top, just a nice little effect, looks kind of cool. Next to those is the Nintendo Switch, it doesn't really get much use, but I have it if I need it. Pokemon Legends Arceus just came out, so I might have to check that out soon. Got an RGB lamp from a company called Aoki. I'm almost positive this was discontinued as well because I can't find it anywhere on Amazon or on the Aoki website. But there are similar ones out there, such as the one from like Gobi, or you could just find a third party one on Amazon. It's the same thing. This one, you just tap the sides and it changes color. The Marvel lamp on top of that was actually given to me for Christmas by my girlfriend's sister. It has Captain America, Iron Man, and Spider-Man on it. She knows I like lights and Marvel, so it was a perfect gift. I usually always have a candle going. I love candles. Besides the light it gives off, it just makes my setup smell amazing. Got a pair of two Astro Mix Amps, one for each console. Whenever I want to talk in game chat on whatever console I'm playing at the time, I just unplug the amp and plug it into its respective amp. The headphones I use are the Astro A40TR editions. Got these back in 2015 and haven't had a problem with them since. They're being held by another command hook. Underneath the desk is a trash can and the Xbox Series X mini fridge. I keep some water bottles and half and half iced tea cans in there and it works actually pretty well at keeping stuff cold. Bad side is it is kind of loud. Got some more Govi LED strips attached to the back of the desk as well. Also some really bad cable management because again, the way this room is set up, it's not ideal for the way I want to cable manage. So again, it'll be fixed when I move, calm down. All right, now it's time for the good stuff. Keyboard is a Corsair K55 RGB, mouse is the Red Dragon M711, and the mouse pad is some thin Corsair mouse mat. I definitely cheaped out on some of the peripherals here, but if they work, they work. Monitors are an Asus Tough 27 inch 144Hz 1080p monitor, and the one on the right is a Lenovo 21 inch 75Hz 1080p monitor. They're both mounted on a dual white monitor mount to match my desk, however, the Lenovo doesn't have a VESA mount on the back. So I had to get an adapter for it, and so far, so good. The camera slash webcam, whatever you want to call it, is the Sony a6000 with the Sigma 16 1.4 lens, connected to an Elgato Cam Link 4K and a dummy battery. I also use this for photography. It's a great camera, honestly, and the lens just makes it that much greater. Attached to it is a ReadyCam tabletop tripod which sits behind the monitor. Speaking of behind the monitor, the lights that shining off the back is a pair of Gobi RGB flow bars. It adds a nice effect and I can change it to whatever color I want in the app. My microphone is the Elgato Wave 3 paired with a shock mount and pop filter. It's probably the best USB mic I've ever owned. The quality sounds great and the Wavelink software that it comes with is definitely something my stream cannot live without. The arm is the Elgato WaveArm LP, LP standing for low profile. I was never really a fan of mic arms blocking my view of a monitor or hand movements whenever I stream. So with this one, I could just tuck it away under my monitor and forget about it and still have a lot of room to move my arms. It's great. I have a lot of cables back here because again, the way my room is set up, oh man. Anyways, I also use a PS4 controller for when I play PC games. That's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, on the top of the computer is a Skylight 2.0 Galaxy projector. You can change its color and it rotates. I love spacey galaxy things, so this was like a must have. It looks so cool. My RGB lights on the roof kind of overpower the projector, so you can't really see it that well, but it's not that bad. It still looks good. And last but not least, the computer. The main thing that powers this entire setup. I'm gonna put the full specs in the description of this video, but if you wanna hear me talk about it, here we go. Built this thing myself. The entire thing is 60% NZXT, mostly because the NZXT peripherals are proprietary with NZXT products, so I have to use NZXT stuff. 
It's crazy. I ran out of breath there. Whoops. The case is the NZXT H510. The motherboard is a Gigabyte B450 DS3H. RAM is 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance. I'm pretty sure it's the 3200 megahertz. I really want to upgrade to the RGB ones. I think that'll make this whole RGB thing I got going on really cool. I'm currently rocking the Ryzen 5 5600X CPU with an Asus Dual RTX 3070 GPU. I was actually one of the lucky few who got a 30 series GPU before the price hike and before the shortage. The GPU cost me literally $4.99, what it was originally advertised. I'm honestly still in shock about it to this day. I don't know how I managed to get one, don't ask me. The power supply is a 750 watt from Corsair. I'm not sure which model, but this is the fairly recent one. The AIO is an NZXT Kraken X53. The fans are also NZXT, they're the AER RGB2s and an NZXT Hue LED strip. Got a Samsung 970 EVO 500 gigabyte SSD for Windows, a two terabyte Seagate hard drive for other random stuff, a two terabyte portable hard drive for photos and videos, and a WD Black one terabyte NVMe SSD. I might upgrade the motherboard and the CPU soon to a 5900X, but still, this thing is an absolute beast. I use it for everything. Editing videos, photos, live streaming, and above all, gaming. So that's pretty much the end of the video and the tour. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you watched the entire thing, you're amazing. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and if you have any questions, I'll happily answer them in the comments below. This took a lot of effort to throw together, so if you enjoyed this video in any way, leave a like. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this in the future, make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you can be notified whenever I upload a video. And uh, that's about it. I'll see you all in the next video of whatever I decide to make. Bye!